All right, so we are live, um, and I believe there is one viewer watching at the moment. Um, and I would love to know from this one viewer if this transmission is actually working. Uh, there's this group chat function on the side, and I'm just going to post a uh, message there. I actually do not know if the viewers can respond on that or if they have to respond through the question and answer function, which is uh, another thing that apparently I've enabled. Um, I realize that uh, if this one viewer can't really respond, then you know, this is all a bit pointless. But uh, you're a very special person, whoever you are right now, this one person. Uh, let's see. OK. Um, hmm. No, I do not believe that anyone can hear me. Can anyone hear me? Question mark. I'll say. Sad face indeed. Okay. Well, I will uh, get a pair of headphones and put them on and just listen to something until I get some kind of response. I don't know if anyone is listening, but uh, I will see if this works. Now, um, I had a problem with my iPod earlier today. Uh, it magically had this issue where uh, it listed all the tracks in my library, but actually did not have any of the music on the library. So as soon as you clicked on a track, it would just skip to the next one. And I think it's because I finally exceeded the 64 gigabyte uh, storage space on this uh, iPhone which I didn't think I would because the little graph didn't say it filled up, but um, I still have to change the settings to get everything in 256 kilobyte, um, kilobit rather, uh, AAC as opposed to lossless on the iPhone, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, the other alternative would be not to put all my music on the same bloody uh, machine at the same time, but I'm not really keen on doing that, I don't think. Uh, so I've got this... Actually, I cannot hear anything if I do that. That's funny. Uh, yeah. So 64 gigabytes is apparently not enough uh, for me, for music. I actually have to look for something bigger. So one of the things I've really been looking at is the Sony NWZX1, which is that $1,000 uh, whiz-bang flagship Android music player that they've got cooking. Um, though it has not been released in any country outside of Japan, as far as I know. Um, actually, it may be now released in Europe. I was reading a page over at What Hi Fi. Actually, let's see. Let's see if we can figure that out because there's a way of sharing um, screens. So uh, let's see if I go here and then I turn this setting on. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, screen share this page. Okay. So. Uh, trying to put in a password. There we go. Very loud mechanical keyboard. So does this? So this seems to be live sharing this screen. Um. So, so if we go NWZX1. Uh. Uh. Sony. Let's see if I can find that article. I read it the other day. Uh, let's see. There we go. What Hi-Fi, that very prestigious uh, 
HiFi publication. They say that the ZX1 is going to be released in Europe. Just look at that thing, it's, it's beautiful. Honestly, it is an amazing looking machine. But, uh, it says here, oh wait, no, no, that's not right. Sorry, there was no release information on that. It was another page that I saw. I think it was some sort of little blog. Uh, Europe release. So, ah, yeah, the Walkman blog. Okay, so this person here, I have no idea how, uh, how you know, authentic this information is, but he says, or she says, that there is a price from uh, Sony Germany for the ZX1 for 698 euros or 951 US dollars. Let's, let's go straight there, actually. That's the easiest way to figure it out. So Deutschland. NW ZX1 Walkman Video MP3 Player mit How shall Flon send the audio quality? I hope no one watching this at the moment. Oh, I got two viewers. Uh, I hope no one watching this is German. But yeah, this thing looks amazing. I would be so keen on getting one of these, especially since it has 128 gigs of storage instead of the 64 gigabytes on my iPhone, and it actually plays Apple lossless which would be really, really cool. Um, but I, you know, I don't know if I'm prepared to shell out a thousand dollars basically for a music player. Uh, you know, but if I do get one, rest assured, I, you know, would make a video out of it. Now let's see, how do I get out of this screen that I'm doing here? There we go. All right. Now I got three viewers. Hey, um, for anyone just joining us, I'm trying out this Google Hangout thing. Um, I actually am just playing around the interface at the moment, so there's nothing formal planned or anything like that. But I am aware that there's a group chat function, um, and I don't know if people can respond on that. And there is also a Q&A. Oh, OK. Ah. Okay, so user Sohang YM has posted a message. I like the look of it. Uh, absolutely, that thing looks fantastic. Uh, now, do I need to answer that question? There's a button that says select, and I can answer the currently answering. So it says currently answering uh, that question. I like the look of it. Um, yes, that thing, and in case you don't know what I'm talking about, we're looking at the... Sony NWZX1. We'll go back to that Walkman blog. Uh, this is the flagship. Oh, actually, no, we'll go back to the What Hi Fi page that had lots of nice pictures on it. Um, this is the flagship music player from Sony. So apparently, they took the audio circuitry uh, in this giant hump here. So it's apparently a step up over the F880. Uh, they've put a whole bunch of uh, audio gizmo circuitry inside this chunky section here. Uh, but honestly, that thing just looks cool. And, you know, I don't know if any of you watch um, Ali Blog's channel, but looking at his experiences with uh, kind of audiophile music players with the interface just being absolutely atrocious... Uh, I would really look forward to a well-built Android music player with some really high-quality output. Hopefully a high-quality output. I actually haven't heard it myself. Um, I've read some HeadFi threads of people who have heard it. Let's see if we can find that there. Um, let's see. So at HeadFi, there's a big NWZX1 thread. So let's see if I can find that. Um, a lot of people on that thread who are absolutely keen on spending a huge amount of money on a music player. Uh, let's see. Uh, by the way, if there's anything you um, two viewers now would like to talk about or would like me to show you, I have a, 
a bunch of uh, headphones behind me that I actually haven't reviewed yet. It's the Sony ZX700, uh, the Sony Z1000, the Sony MA100, a lot of Sony models actually, a Sony MA300, uh, the V55 from Sony, the Pioneer HDJ1500. I have the Beats Studio headphones actually just sitting in a bag at the moment. I haven't opened them yet. There's the JVC HAS500, um, which is really awesome. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that you know, I haven't been able to make a video of yet because the funny thing is that when I make a video, I tend to be very, very um, picky. So I never get anything done. It takes me forever to make a video just because I would tend to start and restart and, and do takes and takes and takes. So hopefully um, this kind of Google Hangout stuff will work because it will actually force me to do everything live and I can get some kind of dialogue going more with, with the viewers. Um, so I got a question, uh, Patrick Ku. Actually, that's not a question, that's a statement. Um, yeah, so I was the first viewer, but I watched it on YouTube, so I couldn't comment now watching from Google+. Plus. Okay, so that tells me something, because I, I've never used this system before. Apparently, you cannot make comments if you watch it on YouTube, but you can make comments if you are watching from Google+. Plus. Let me know if that's the case. Oh, actually, I should have selected that. So I, apparently I select this and then that highlights uh, the fact that I am answering this question. Um, please guys, let me know if uh, the audio or the video is, is bad or anything like that because again, I, I really don't know what's happening at the moment. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to what I was talking about before. So we've got the NWZX1 head fire thread over here. And this thread is just uh, oh God, 214 pages now. Jeez, uh, 214 pages of people who have probably not heard this thing yet, so that's really exciting. Um, what DAC chip does the ZX1 employ? Anyone know? Sony doesn't disclose that info. Well, Sony doesn't, but I bet you someone in Japan's opened that thing up and they know exactly what's in that. Um, you know, they, they call that the Sony, uh, uh, what is it, MX amp or whatever. They have Class D amplifiers inside the, uh, the, the Sony music players generally. Um, pretty high quality, apparently. I do not know. I used to have a little Sony Walkman, uh, which I've lent to a friend, otherwise I would show it to you, but I had this little tiny Sony Walkman player, and that used to be my dedicated music player. And honestly, I kind of miss that because it had physical buttons and you could change the volume and you could change the track uh, without taking it out of your pocket. Whereas with uh, something like an iPhone, you know, you've got to pull it out of your pocket and, 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 and um, you know, unlock the phone. I, I use a passcode. You've got to unlock the phone and do all kinds of things. Uh, the audio is really muffled. The audio is really muffled. Okay, um, let's see. So I got the built-in microphone. Is it quiet or is it just muffled? Um, I wish there was some way for me to monitor what is actually coming through the broadcast. I actually haven't worked out if there's a way for me to do that. Uh, let me see if I can change the microphone and tell me if this makes any difference. Uh, I'm the microphone now. Now. Um, I've changed the microphone. I don't know if that's changed things. Can you let me know if the audio is better now or worse? Okay, thank you, uh, Mohammed, for letting me know that. Um, just let me know if the uh, audio is better or worse with this microphone. Uh, again, I'm having issues with the microphone because the USB mics um, with this iMac uh, and every USB audio device I've had with this iMac, if you've uh, seen my complaints. There is a bug in Mavericks 10.9 at the moment um, that makes the audio signal degrade uh, with USB mics, and I suspect it's probably happening with this one. So just let me know if that's working. Um, muffled. Still muffled. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, oh, no, no. You're saying it's muffled instead of just quiet. Okay. All right. Um, I'll just answer another question now. Uh, what? Okay, so Muhammad asks, "What do you think about the Bose 
uh, the Bose in-ear noise cancelling earphones. Um, I do not know about the Bose in-ear noise cancelling earphones. I actually have not. Uh, I wasn't aware that there was any special noise cancelling earphones that they've made recently. Uh, so let's let's check that out. Uh, because I haven't heard of this before. Bose.com, let's go to the Australian site. Uh, so yeah, no, I haven't heard that they're making noise cancelling earphones. Are they earphones or headphones? Uh, I haven't heard much Bose stuff myself. I've heard the Bose in ears, which I thought were okay. I have a friend who really liked them just because they had this special ear hook design that only fit his ears. Um, so he was a big fan of those. Uh, okay, so which ones are the noise cancelling ones? Uh, I see a bunch of uh, headphones, which are probably noise cancelling. I uh, will just head back to the. Uh, sorry. So is this the? Actually, let's go to the group chat. There's, just to check, there's also a group chat function. Does anyone actually see that, or are they only seeing the question and answer? Now they're static in the audio. Yeah, I thought so. If that's coming through the. Uh, that's coming through the, the microphone. Cool. We'll switch back to the microphone. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be muffled. Uh, there's not much I can do about that at this point, um, just because of that stupid uh, problem with Mavericks. So thanks, uh, thanks, Muhammad. Ah, oh, you know that is unfortunate. Um, okay, so yeah, Muhammad, you were asking me about the noise cancelling Bose uh, earphones. I can't quite tell. Do you, do you have this specific model number? I haven't heard them, as I said. Um, I have tried the Bose uh, AE2s just in a store. I found that a lot of Bose stuff is made to initially impress. So it's got a fairly V-shaped signature. There's a big... Um, they tend to be very bassy and then quite brash with the highs. Uh, and, you know, personally, that kind of stuff I think works really well in a five-minute store demo or maybe even a one-minute store demo, but it can be quite exhausting to listen to. Um, but that said, I haven't owned a Bose product long-term, so I can't say for sure. I certainly don't think Bose is just absolute crap. A lot of people say that Bose stuff is just garbage, and I really doubt that because it's unlikely that a company of its size could get away with just putting out huge amounts of garbage. It's the same with Beats. I mean, there is a market. There's always a market. Um, sorry, I just had to go to drink tea. Um, oh, okay, so it's not there. Um, if you could tell me the exact model number, Mohammed, that would be great. Um, but yeah, the Bose stuff, I think, you know, uh, it, it's well designed, at the very least. The build quality seems pretty good on a lot of both stuff. Uh, I've always been pretty impressed by their industrial design. And, you know, it, it did start with an acoustic engineer, so it's not one of those companies that operates with no, uh, no technical background whatsoever. Okay, um, so, all right. Oh, okay. So Muhammad's just shown me this link, and uh, So has pointed out that I've tried one of the Bose earphones with a noise cancellation about weeks ago when they had a stand in front of Westfield in Sydney. I saw that stand, actually. I walked past uh, the Sydney Westfield, and I actually saw this big Bose thing. But honestly, I think it's very stupid to demo headphones in the middle of a public thoroughfare where there's just a bunch of street buskers who play music really loudly. I think it's absolutely stupid, but I guess they needed the foot traffic. Um, on the same day, I also walked past someone showing me a Toshiba tablet. I think it was the Encore tablet. And it was really awkward because they gave me the tablet and I did not have the heart to say to them, this thing is just heavy and honestly it feels terrible. This this gigantic... I mean, I mean, of course, I have a Surface, right? So what, what can I say? But... You know, this this is this is packing a Core i5 in it, whereas that that Toshiba tablet, I think it was an Intel, uh, uh, one of those uh, quad core Atom Haswell chips, and it was just really heavy and clunky, and I thought it was a bit bleh, honestly. But no, 
Uh, maybe it had some really whiz bang features. I didn't look too much into it. It's like those uh, uh, Lenovo yoga tablets look absolutely terrible. Sorry, I'm rambling. Let me get back to this question. So uh, let's see. Muhammad has given me a link to the uh, Bose earphones that he was talking about. I see. Quiet Comfort 20 acoustic noise cancelling headphones. Average 4.53 rating. Where is that from? Amazon or? Hmm, I wonder. Okay, so. Um, oh, yeah, Bose is one of those companies that I believe, yeah, does not post specifications for any of their products. They're just too fancy for specifications. I think they're the same in that regard as Bowers and Wilkins uh, and a bunch of those other, uh, you know, too fancy for specification companies. So I couldn't tell for sure, but yes, this actually this product actually has a similar design to the product that my friend really liked. So it has this ear hook here that goes into a part of your outer ear that keeps it secure. And I've tried it, it's actually quite comfortable. Um, as a general note, I do not see the point of a noise cancelling earphone or noise cancelling earbud just because if you get something like the uh, if you get something like the Shaw SE215 or the Edimotic uh, series of earphones, they should be able to block out about 90 to 95% of ambient noise. Uh, you really do not need extra electronic circuitry in an earbud to block out ambient noise. That shouldn't be uh, necessary. Or even if it is, it's just a lot more. You know, it's a lot more stuff. It's more electronics. It needs a battery. It needs a bunch of extra stuff. And with most noise cancelling products, they add a subtle hum to the sound, which can be a bit infuriating. I guess if you're on an airplane, the hum doesn't really matter because you know you'll still be hearing the the airplane vibration through your body no matter what you do. Uh, interestingly, I took these Amperias once on a plane flight, and it was a turboprop plane, so. It was a regional domestic flight um, with, with a propeller as opposed to a jet engine. And what was really interesting was because the whole plane vibrated, it made the headphones vibrate. So even though the HD R25 has amazing noise isolation, the vibration was enough to make the driver diaphragm inside the headphone vibrate in sympathy with the airplane. So no matter what, uh, Everything I listened to sounded absolutely terrible because it'd just be like, brr, brr, brr. Um, and I, yeah. So you know, random note, but don't don't expect good audio quality if you go onto a turbo crop airplane. So I can say, um, okay. So again, uh, if you're just joining us, I'm trying out this Google Hangouts thing. I'm trying to work out how this all works because I'm interested in using this as a way of maybe doing quick unboxings or question and answer sessions or um, doing just little product review spotlights. Um, so please let me know how the audio is for you guys. Let me know how the video is and whether or not you can hear me clearly. Uh, unfortunately, I've been told that the audio is a bit muffled. Uh, there isn't too much I can do about it because the external microphones are not working with the iMac that I'm using at the moment. Um, and I could use my Surface to do a Google Hangout, but I found that I cannot get the webcam elevated to a to a proper height where you know you honestly don't see the rest of my room because it's kind of garbage in here. Um, okay, so Patrick Koo asked, uh, "I have the Audio Technica M50, but I want to mod the cable because it's too heavy. Any advice?" Uh, Honestly, don't ask me for modding advice. Every single time I mod a headphone, 50% of the time I break it. Um, I'm not very uh, careful when it comes to modding. All I can say is I agree. The M50 cable can be very heavy, especially if you have the three meter straight cable. Uh, that thing is just heavy, and it's just too heavy for portable use. That's generally why I don't recommend the M50 for portable use. Um, if you want to mod the cable and you aren't too sure about it, and you don't have any soldering skills or any modding skills whatsoever, I do recommend you look around HeadFi and see if there's someone sorry, local in your area who is prepared to mod the headphones for you. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, that's that's all I can really recommend. Unfortunately, I, I haven't had any experience with modding the M50 before. I have opened it up before. Let me see if I can grab it. Uh, yeah, so I've got the uh, M50 here. The M50 inside is pretty darn simple. Uh, if you take away the ear pad and inside, it's just it's just a sponge kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's not much to it. So, I mean, honestly, when you want a headphone, be prepared to destroy it. That's all I can really say as far as headphones go. Okay. Um, now, the next question from Muhammad is, is it possible that we move to a chat-based conversation rather than a Q&A type thing? Also, I got the Surface Pro 2 after watching your videos. In fact, that's how I find it. Thank you. Um, yeah, the Surface Pro 2 is one of... It's actually my most watched video on my channel at the moment, by far. I think it's it's more watched than um, the last... The next three videos combined, honestly. Every day it's about 400 views. Um, which is about surprising because I made the Surface Pro 2 video fairly... Fairly, uh, fairly late after it was released, so I didn't actually expect that much. Um, I guess it was because during the Christmas period, a lot of people ended up watching the video, and it got, you know, it got upranked in Google search algorithms or whatever. I'm not sure, but um, you know, not arguing with it. Very happy with that video. Uh, very happy with the response. Okay, so is it possible that we move to a chat-based conversation rather than a Q&A type thing? Yes, it is. It is possible if we can work out how the group chat function works. See, I have this... Um, I'm going to get a bit inception on you guys at the moment. I'm going to see if this works. I have this... Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Let, let's, let's not do that because that is... <laughs> that, is, that is terrifying. Um, okay. Okay, there is a group chat button that I'm looking at at the moment. But so far, when I type messages in, it seems like, can anyone hear me? It seems like there can only be a few people who can um, watch. Maybe if I specifically, let's see. So I can click on your name, Muhammad. Uh, but it doesn't let me do anything other than that. So I don't know if I can actually put you into this. I, I'm well aware that with Google Hangouts, you can actually get a bunch of people in the same call. But I do not actually know how that works. Because I uh, all I did when I started this Hangout was I invited this, the top fan circle that YouTube created for me, um, and that's all I've done. So apparently there's 10 people now watching this, but I do not know how to invite people specifically to join in on the conversation. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I just type the name in directly. Mohammed mm, Asim. Okay, so there are many Mohammed Asim, so unfortunately I cannot. Sorry if I used your full name and you didn't want me to use that, by the way. I don't know if these things are publicly viewable or not. I'm very sorry if uh, that was not what you wanted to happen. I, I'm, as I said, I'm still trying to work out how this works. Anyway, okay. Uh, okay, so to me, the video is in 720. That should be correct, and that seems to be the highest quality. That should be the highest quality from what I've read from the documentation. Um, and the audio sounds like when you're using a speaker to talk with someone in a mobile phone. Unfortunately, that might be the case because there's echo. Oh, hang on. Okay, hang on. Yep, you're right. It might actually be a way of, of solving this problem. Uh, okay. So this is a pair of Sony ZX700s, and there's an iPhone microphone here. But I think this should actually work with any... The uh, audio pots on the iMac, this should actually work.
bla 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 bla. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm live, actually, I did not realize. Uh, okay, so the people who are still on here are the same people, I assume. Um, let's see, let's open up the uh, audience questions app. Okay, so it's still there. Uh, let me know, because this is now using the microphone here, let me know if this sounds better or worse or whatever. Just uh, let me know if that has improved. Okay, so... Uh, Next question from Apex. This is a really interesting question, actually. Being a new channel, how has the uh, headphone industry reps been towards you? How friendly have they been? Um, I've actually found that the response has been pretty good. Now, I now the thing is that when you start out a new channel, you actually basically when I started out, I actually had to approach some people, um, as opposed to them approaching me, and that's generally still the case. Uh, most of the industry reps, uh, a lot of them, you know, you, you type an email. You, first, you had to work out which email address you had to send it to to, work, to to get a review sample or anything like that. Uh, and a lot of times, there's just no reply. But uh, Sennheiser has been really, really good. Uh, uh, they have a dedicated social media contact who I've been corresponding with. Unfortunately, um, it's been, I've been a bit unfair to him recently just because I, I had to admit, honestly, I haven't had that much time to make videos. So he's been uh, you know, offering a lot of different products for me to try out, but I haven't been able to take him up on his offer. But um, Sennheiser have been absolutely fantastic. Audio Technica uh, have been fantastic. Audio Technica Australia um, specifically, just because um, you know, I, I get the impression with Audio Technica that uh, the 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 kind of various branches of the company are fairly independent in different countries, um, and I've been very lucky to have a good rapport with Audio Technica Australia. Uh, Sony Australia has actually uh, made some offers. I've I've asked them for some products, and they've been really good. Um, there are some companies that yeah I haven't had responses to. Generally, uh, with the big companies, they know what they're doing because they've already done uh, correspondence with magazines and stuff like that, so they know the kind of essentially the journalistic code of contact with that kind of thing. So they've all been really good. I haven't had any situations where there's been big conflicts of interest. Uh, and even in a situation like with the Sennheiser Momentum on ear review, where uh, Sennheiser actually, you know, basically uh, offered me that headphone to have a listen to, and I wasn't so keen on it, um, but I let them, I let the Sennheiser rep basically know that after I did the review. And he was like, sure, that's that's fine. Do you want to review another product? So, um, you know, it hasn't been like this kind of thing where they only expect you to say good things, which is really, really positive. Um, there's also always, you know, starting out doing headphone reviews on a channel, uh, there are a lot of things that I have to think about in terms of ethics. Uh, and I've, I've tried very hard to kind of, um, you know, be more than transparent with a lot of things. Um, but yeah, no, the, the industry reps have been really great. Uh, you know, I've, I've had uh, quite a lot of fun. But generally, I've always preferred to buy the products myself in retail. And, and the reason behind that is because when I buy it in retail, I know what it costs. I know what it feels like to take the money out of my wallet and pay for it. Um, and, and that gives me a little bit more perspective on what the product is like. That said, you can't buy everything. You honestly <laughs> cannot afford to buy everything. So, um, you know, uh, if if there's a good opportunity to have a listen to it, I I'm, I will take them up on that offer. Uh, okay. So, ah, thank you. It sounds so much better. So apparently, this microphone does sound better. That is great. I'm very ha happy to hear that. Okay. Uh, all right, so no new questions. So I'll just point out, this is the Sony ZX700 that I'm wearing right now. And this is a bit of an underrated headphone, I think. This is Sony's uh, studio monitor, the cheaper studio monitor headphone. But I think this is one of the better options if you're looking for a portable, uh, somewhat neutral sounding headphone that's actually around ear. So we got these big ear cups, and they will go around the ear, and that's that's really nice. Um, but at the same time, for a studio monitor, it's not its not absurdly large looking on your head, like something like the M50. If you put the M50 on your head, 
it does look a bit absurd, I find. And something like the AKG K550, uh, other studio kind of monitor headphones, even the Shure SRH840, I think, is is on the line there. I think you can wear the 840 in public and not look too crazy. The ZX700, though, I think is a brilliantly neutral headphone. The bass is a bit underwhelming on the ZX700. It, it feels fairly unenthusiastic with the bass. It feels fairly uh, unconvincing. Um, but I find that the ZX700 is really exceptional with acoustic music. Um, and if you aren't listening to a lot of modern recordings, especially if you listen to vocals or female vocals, I think the ZX700 is a really awesome headphone. Now, uh, that said, I have the Z1000 as well. And the Z1000 is the... The Z1000 is the bigger brother of the Z, ZX700, sorry. Um, and the Z1000 is a big disappointment for me because I paid a lot of this money for this. This was before I started doing YouTube videos and everything like that. Um, and it is probably the best built headphone that Sony has ever made. It's made out of solid magnesium. And so when I was talking about the uh, MDR1R review, uh, and, I, and I wish we had this kind of premium build quality. The Z1000 is what I'm referring to. The build quality on this is fantastic. But unfortunately, the sound quality really isn't a big step up over the ZX700. Uh, overall, what's good about the, Z, the ZX700 seems a, bit, seems a bit unacceptable for a headphone of this cost. Now, the Z1000 is now discontinued, so, you know, bygones be bygones. There's a... 7520, which is the professional studio monitoring version of the Z1000. Apparently, it sounds different. Apparently, the bass is improved. Um, but it's still a very expensive headphone. It's about $400 for the 7520. And I don't think it's very good value, considering that the MDR1R is probably uh, everything that the Z1000 really should have been, except you know maybe a little more colored. Um, yeah, so the Z1000 was a bit of a disappointment for me. Eventually, I was going to make a, a review of both of these headphones in the same video just to have a little bit more of a talk about it, um, but it is a very disappointing headphone for me. For the ZX700, for like, I got this from Catch of the Day in Australia for like 60 bucks. This thing is fantastic. Uh, if you're after a comfortable, around ear, neutral sounding, not too bass heavy uh, kind of studio monitor uh, alternative. Okay, uh, let's see. Next question from Muhammad is, on an unrelated note, do you play games? What are some of your favorite movies and artists? Oh, I could answer this question all day. Uh, yes, I do play games, and uh, I've been actually thinking about making gaming videos. I've been actually playing games more, more um, recently. Now, it used to be that I used to be a really hardcore, well, not hardcore, but I used to basically only play strategy and RPG games. Uh, and nowadays, I play all kinds of things. So the, the game that I've been playing recently is Crusader Kings 2. And I'll just head over to the, let's see if I can make this work. Uh, we'll go, OK, oops, Crusader Kings 2. Yeah. So I've been playing this game, Crusader Kings 2, which is basically um, a feudalism simulator. And uh, the, this game is probably the most complicated game that I've ever played in my entire life. It is just amazing. You, it's, it's like 100 different lines of succession that you have to keep track of. You basically play as a, a... You choose to play as a noble, like, for instance, a king or a lord or a duke or something like that, and you and you pass down titles um, through uh, generations. And the crazy thing about this game is that it makes you really realize actually why people in the Middle Ages did crazy things like marry their sisters or, or, or do that kind of thing because they're all trying to keep the lines of succession within the family bloodline. And you don't realize how crazy that is until you play a game like Crusader Kings 2 where you're just making these decisions, like for instance, I realized, oh, the heir to my throne, and because in the way the game works is that you play as the heir once your current player dies, um, but the heir to the throne was absolutely terrible. He was 
he was just, uh, you know, terrible stats, a very, a real idiot. So basically, I had to do something where I had to murder my own children until I got to the heir that I wanted um, through these arcane plots. So Crusader Kings 2, outrageously complex game, but very, very cool. Um, I do play other games. One of my favorite games that I played recently was uh, Gone Home, which is a bit of an indie darling. I play a lot of little kind of indie games nowadays. Uh, that's because I don't really have a computer that can run, uh, you know, any of the new release titles, and I'm not a huge fan of FPS shooters, uh, honestly. I do like some. I really like Killzone on the uh, PlayStation, but Killzone 3, oh no, sorry, Killzone 4 has apparently been a huge disappointment, so it's very sad. But the multiplayer is apparently very good, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, do you know what speedrunning is? If so, what do you think about it? Um, that's uh, from Cloaked Yoshi. Um, I know what speedrunning is. Uh, I don't quite understand the instinct to do speedrunning myself because, uh, you know, I, I take forever to play games. But I always think that speedrunning in particular, I find that uh, Japanese people in particular seem to be very keen on doing speedruns, and I suspect it's because yeah, with Japanese people, they have a cultural ethos of, um, what's it called? Um, not gambate. There's a there's a phrase that they use that means to do the utmost. I forget the actual phrase. But when Japanese people approach something, they they go all in. So whether it's hot dog eating competitions or playing Half Life Two in two minutes or something like that, um, you know, it's it's quite amazing to watch someone try to work out how to do a speed run. But it's not it's not really my thing. Um, uh, I I I tend to um, you know, enjoy just playing a video game and taking my time with it. Okay. Uh, next question is from Apex. Have any companies approached you to review any cheesy, silly products like speakers that light up and have dancing water? That's oddly specific. Uh, speakers that light up and have dance. Is there actually such a product? If there is, please link me to that product. I'd love to see that. Um, but uh, no, I have... Occasionally, I get emails from people who stumble on the YouTube channel, and I think basically they have bots to work out. Oh, this person has X number of subscribers, so and they do reviews, so maybe we should send them uh, a product to have a look at. Um, but nothing silly. It's just things, little things like iPhone cases or, or or car mounts or that kind of things. And the reason why I don't take them up on these kind of offers is that I already am way behind as far as a backlog of headphone reviews goes. I don't really go want to go off into making videos about all kinds of little uh, products. Um, nothing against them. I'm sure they're really awesome products, but uh, uh, I, I, I think I have a list of about 10 uh, headphones that I still have yet to make a video out of, um, so I don't really want to start moving into making crazy products. Okay, so next question. From Gary, do you have any news about Microsoft Surface Pro 2 with 3G LTE? Uh, what's your review about Surface 2 Pro? And really interested to purchase one, but I need the 3G or 4G support on the internet. This is, or do you have any recommendations for a W Windows 8 Pro tablet? With the, this is actually a question that I have tried to figure out myself. Um, I do not think that Microsoft is going to make a Surface tablet with LTE support. Um, I just don't think they'll do that just because. Uh, you know, it, it will involve making too many SKUs because you have to have different versions of the product for different countries and there's different wireless baselines. And I think they already got really burnt on the Surface, the original Surface, where they had to write down almost like a billion dollars worth of inventory. Uh, now, if you look at the Nokia, and basically the equivalent uh, from, of the Surface 2 from Nokia, the 2520, that tablet, that has uh, 3G support. Uh, the Dell Windows 8 tablets, the Dell Venue Pro 8 and the Dell Venue Pro 11, which is basically the Surface Pro 2 equivalent, uh, I believe they have LTE support or at least 3G support in America. The Australian models do not have support for uh, wireless internet yet. Yeah, I have been researching this question because um, I'm kind of, I wish that this tablet did actually have uh, wireless connectivity. So, you know, I just basically plug it into my phone to get wireless. Um, which isn't too bad, it's not too um, annoying, but it would be nice to have something that I didn't have to get two cables and plug them in together and do that kind of stuff, so, you know, whatever. Okay, um, let's see. 
So Cloak Yoshi says, I love my momentum. Uh, I'm guessing that's the original momentum. And I figured I would share a little trick. I found it to make them fit people with a little bit of too big of ears. I inserted some foam into the inner lip of the cushion, makes the chamber of the ear much smaller. My ears are pretty small. That is actually a trick that a lot of people use for all kinds of headphones. You can put foam or something in just inside. So what Yoshi is saying basically, uh, hopefully you can still hear, is that you put, you see that there's a gap here and you put some sort of inner tube. Sometimes people use O-rings from plumbers. They put something to space out the ear pad cushion and give you a little bit more space. That is certainly an option when it comes to over-ear headphones. Um, because a lot of people with their ears touch the drivers uh, on the inside. I don't have that problem myself, or at least when I do, it's not too bad. But yeah, that's certainly a, a tip worth sharing. So thanks, um, Yoshi. Um, okay. So Aphex asks, besides gaming, are there any other things you've thought of doing videos on? Uh, food. I love eating food. I would love to do videos about eating food. But the difference with, uh, I think, restaurant reviews, what's very different is that you can't very easily go to a restaurant and take a camera and not have them notice that you are filming them. So when you generally watch restaurant review videos, uh, whether it's Guy Fieri um, or, or you know any kind of food eating thing, they basically have to prearrange with the cook that they're going to do that, and then they had the whole song and dance. And you know those shows where someone eats something and they go, mm, "This is really nice," but you know you know that they're not going to say it's terrible. They're not going to stand there in front of the chef and tell them, "I don't like the um, I don't like the food that you just served me." So I've been trying to figure out a way of maybe doing food reviews or, or doing something that's somewhat more anonymous. Um, but then again, I don't really want to do cloak and dagger stuff where I come around with a secret camera and walk into a restaurant and film me eating. But yeah, I would, I would love to do videos about eating food, um, especially ramen. I'm a big ramen fan. I would love to uh, do those kind of videos. Um, anyway, okay, so if you're just joining us, uh, this is a test. I'm doing a test of the Google Hangout stuff. Um, so I'm just doing a bit of a loose question and answer session at the moment, just trying to get a feel for the way this is working so far. I mean, let me know uh, if you find this boring or whatever. Um, but uh, so far, I think it's working. I, I'm guessing the next time I try this, I'm going to do it with a little more structure, so with a bit more show notes. And especially, I want to see if I can get some people uh, in the headphone community or on the YouTube community and have a kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. It might be a bit more interesting to do that kind of thing. Uh, but, um, you know, this is actually working a little bit better than I expected um, once we got the microphone working, which is a good thing. Uh, okay, so... Mohammed says, I found a link to a video showing off dancing water speakers. Now, I've been given a YouTube link from the Hub, and apparently there is a way for me to uh, make YouTube links uh, visible to the followers of this channel. So let me see if I can do this. Add videos to playlist. So this better, yeah, okay, good. It is an illuminated dancing. Certainly not a dancing. Uh, is everyone seeing this at the moment? Do I have to? No, no. Let me try that again. I, I don't know about you, but this actually, I mean, I'm sure it sounds like garbage, but it seems like an interesting product. I mean, it's kind of cool. Um, if it's synchronized with the sound, I can, it certainly be a conversation starter. Um, I, I wouldn't mind having a pair of those just to uh, play around with. That's actually, that actually seems pretty cool. Um, can you let me know if that video actually played? Because I have no idea if that actually was something that you guys could see or I just sat there watching a video myself. Uh, okay. Hmm.
do you play League of Legends? Ask uh, Darian. Uh, no, I don't play League of Legends. I know friends who do play League of Legends. I've watched them play League of Legends. It seems very... Um, I've, I've never been any really... I, I get very tense during any game that requires a lot of competitive uh, multiplayer performance. I'm, I'm not actually that great at those kind of games. Uh, I used to play a lot of StarCraft when, uh, you know, it was StarCraft 1. I would play that, but when I play StarCraft, it, I just get so tense that my shoulders basically lock up, and, and when I'm playing it, I'm just like, oh, God. Um, so it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit exhausting, so generally I just play single-player games a lot of the times. Uh, multiplayer, I try to do kind of random multiplayer games. Uh, okay. Food restaurant... Cloak says, food restaurant reviews would be awesome. What do you think about having an amp for the Momentum original? I have a Fio Kilimanjaro, and I don't hear the difference, only the max volume is louder. You have the nit hit the nail on the head. Uh, Cloaked Yoshi. Basically, portable amps, I don't have a portable amp, I don't buy portable amps, because most of the times, they're not going to do anything for you. They really aren't going to do much for you. Um, and a lot of people are probably going to get angry at me for saying this, but um, honestly, if you actually look at the way the amplifiers work, all amplifiers are really meant to be a reservoir for power. They're meant to supply additional power to move the diaphragm. Um, to provide an impulse to the speaker diaphragm when the output from like a portable device is not enough. Now, nowadays, when you get portable players like and portable headphones like the Sennheiser Momentum, they're designed to work with current generation portable players. And these portable players, especially um, a lot of the current generation Apple products, um, any of the current generation Sony Walkman products, their outputs are more than sufficient to drive anything. The only thing that you might want an amp for, if you're a real stickler uh, for quality, is that you might want an amp to lower the output impedance of a source. So for instance, on the iPhone 5, the output impedance on the headphone jack is, I believe, 3.2 ohms, and you can get headphone amplifiers like the Fio products that have a, a output impedance of lower than an ohm. And you know, if you want that last bit of audio quality, I suppose, uh, you know, you can get a portable amp, but honestly, it seems very fussy, it's an extra cost to me, uh, extra battery to charge, extra thing to carry around in your pocket, and in the end, when I'm going around in the city, you're not going to notice an audible difference just because of the background noise uh, from the train or from people around you. Um, that's going to eliminate any possible advantage you get from a portable amplifier. Now, if you're cutting around a portable player and you have an amplifier and you're just sitting down all day at work and you and you want the best possible experience, and you have a really expensive pair of headphones, that's when I would consider a portable amplifier, but I'm not in that situation personally, so that's why I'm not a big fan of them. Um, but they have their uses, so, you know, different strokes for different folks. Okay. Uh, next question, Aphex asks, is, are you in school, and if so, what are you taking? I'm actually in university. I'm doing a postgraduate degree in media art. Um, and it's kind of an art, uh, basically a digital media, uh, digital arts degree. Uh, there's a bunch of projects that I'm working on at the moment, um, but uh, I'll kind of, uh, hopefully when something good comes out of that, I'll have something more to talk about that, but for now it's a bit more under wraps, um, a little bit more secret. Um, okay, so, all right, uh, let's talk about... Let's see, let's talk about, I've got so notes here. Uh, I should probably talk about the Beat Studio. I'll just show you this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a live unboxing, but I'll just show you this thing. I have here the Beat Studio. Now, this is gonna be an interesting product to review. I'm not gonna open it as you see, it's completely sealed. This is gonna be an interesting product to review because there is no company that gets more uh, ire than Beats, I find, in audio circles. And a lot of the time, it's from people who haven't even listened to them longer than, say, two minutes or something like that at an Apple store. Now, I, I, I haven't actually heard that many Beats products. I did do that Beats mixer review, and I found that that was actually a decent-sounding headphone, uh, maybe just a little... Uh, 
you know, it was very uncomfortable and the sound was perhaps a little aggressive for me. But I didn't find it was a terrible product. I didn't think it was a terrible product. Um, and apparently, a lot of people have been saying that this, uh, this one is is a big improvement. Uh, high five guy, sorry, high five guy five two eight. Uh, if you watch his YouTube videos, he's a big fan of Beats products, and he and he reckons that this is a big improvement. Everything that I've read has been, sorry, um, be, begrudgingly positive about this product. So I'll be very interested. I got this on sale actually. This is normally three ninety nine, and honestly, I would not pay four hundred dollars for any headphone made out of plastic. That's just it. If it was four hundred dollars, I wouldn't pay for it made out of plastic. It's at, at at that kind of price point, I'm expecting better build quality, no matter how nice plastic it is. That said, uh, I got this on sale for something like $280, so apparently these do go on sale at some times. Um, and I'm kind of curious about how this will sound. I'm expecting it to sound bassy, but um, a lot of people have been saying it's bassy without being crazy. So uh, it hopefully I'll be positively surprised, um, um, but this will be a bit of a controversial review, I suspect. Um, Oh, and yes, I got the red color. I think red and white is an awesome looking combination. It's a bit flashy. Um, honestly, I, I actually like the look of the matte black studios the most, but I could not find those on sale in Australia, so I got the red. Uh, regardless, once I'm done with that, uh, I'm very happy to do a review of a Vitz product just because, honestly, a lot of people are interested in them and the resale value on Beats products is fantastic. So after I'm done with the review, if I don't like it, I'm picking up on eBay, basically lose no money. So, you know, why not? Um, yeah, I, I was going to ask you, do you think that Beats are overrated? That's crazy, lol. Uh, yeah, if they're overrated. Like, so it's really hard to... Audio is a really subjective hobby. In the end, it's, it, it has to be subjective. Um, I don't I don't like the idea a lot of people some people just say you're buying beats headphones for fashion um, and in the end that to me to denigrate someone for liking something because it's aesthetically pleasing is kind of stupid because really when you're listening to music and when you're listening to uh, music and and you're saying one headphone is better than the other that's a very subjective interpretation as well that's very that's a very aesthetic interpretation. So you're just saying that you prefer something to sound better as opposed to look better. And, you know, honestly, I, I fall in the same camp. I would like products to sound better than they look. But there are going to be some people out there who would like to spend more to get a product endorsed by a celebrity or get a product that they think absolutely looks cool. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you, you pay more for a Dyson vacuum cleaner, and some people are prepared to do that. You pay more for some fancy-looking stuff. Uh, you know... I'm an art student, basically, so I, uh, art, a lot of the times, is the highest margin product in the world. It's just a piece of paper, and then you can just do whatever bullshit you want, and then it's like $50,000 or a million dollars to sell that piece of work. But in the end, everything is worth exactly what people are willing to pay for it. So there's no... When you say something is overrated, it's like saying... It, it, it's a difficult kind of thing. Because, yes, there is a level of technical performance you should expect when you give a certain amount of money. But on the other hand, uh, you know, I don't like the kind of attitude where people just denigrate people for buying products that they don't think sound good. Especially if, if they haven't actually heard them themselves, um, which is what a lot of people do. But, you know, that's my two cents. That's my kind of perspective uh, on this kind of uh, thing. So, uh, next question uh, from Wayudin. Uh, I recognize that username very well. Um, hey, uh, what is your least favorite headphone you've heard so far? Hmm, least favorite. Now, let me think, because it would be easy enough to say some shitty earphone for $2. Sorry about my language, by the way. Um, some terrible earphone for $2 is bad, but you know anyone can say that. Let me think of something that was just really disappointing. Uh, the K701, the K701 from AKG is a product that I know a lot of people like, but whenever I've heard it, I've been pretty disappointed in it. I don't know if I've been most disappointed in it, but with the K701, when I listen to it, I just find that the timbre of the sound sounds a little plasticky to me, and I don't quite 
gel with it. It's not my favorite sounding uh, headphone. And I've got my friend Thomas, who you've probably seen in some of the YouTube videos. He's a big fan of the K701. He has a big, um, but I'm personally not really keen on it. I don't know why, um, but it's one of those products that's never really struck me. Um, apparently, the K712 is something that I might enjoy, so I'm looking out for maybe hearing a pair of those. Um, but if I had to name a headphone that I think is consistently kind of disappointing me, it would be the K701. Um, what audio devices, earpods, headphones, etc., do you think are overrated? This is from Darian. Uh, I suspect that the things that are most consistently overrated are the really expensive vintage headphones. Uh, I, I think that those kind of really old headphones uh, are back from before people had design labs and acoustic uh, engineers and that kind of thing to design things. Uh, but they've gained some kind of mythical status, like the Sony uh, R10 headphone, which is like $6,000 now, uh, resale. I think those things are probably much worse than uh, the retail, the kind of aftermarket price tag would would uh, kind of indicate. Um, that said, I haven't heard any of the amazing vintage stuff myself, apart from my friend's uh, Adrian's W10 BTG, which I made a video of. And I have my pair of... Sony SA5000s, which I have a review of, so these Sony SA5000s here, um, which I think are honestly weird sounding. They sound weird. They they have a really, uh, they sound like laser beams, and it's the kind of sound signature that I think people uh, listen to, and they think it sounds really awesome because it has a lot of uh, treble detail. Uh, which is true because it's just exaggerated to no end, but it's by no means a, a, a balanced sound signature. So I think those kind of products, the older products that are discontinued, they're probably discontinued for a reason. Um, and a lot of them, I think, are probably not as good as the price tag would suggest. Uh, but yeah, again, I haven't really heard any of those. So um, Jerry goes, uh, I'm taking digital media to which university are you from? We're from UNSW. If you've seen any of the discussion videos that we do, uh, I think um, Joshua wears a UNSW jersey or, or some people recognize the engineering labs. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool university. Apex asks, what are your thoughts on expensive audiophile grade wires? I think that they are a rip. Um, I don't believe in cables making any difference in sound uh, because there are two people who basically tell you, okay, so there's one group of people who tell you cables make a difference and they are people who sell cables and people who buy cables. So they have an interest in you know, believing that the products are good. And then the other group are electrical engineers who have no interest in people buying expensive cables and they tell you they don't work and they have electrical engineering degrees and they have double blind tests and they have et cetera, et cetera to tell you. Um, uh, I'm more inclined to, to trust the people who have no reason to tell me that the cables uh, make any difference. And they've done those double blind tests where they put speaker, uh, you know, put speakers through speaker wire um, and, uh, sorry, no, coat, coat hangers. They ran coat hangers versus very expensive monster cables, and people, audiophiles, could not tell the difference. Uh, it's like wine tasting. They've generally found that people cannot differentiate between wines beyond a certain level of expense. Now, obviously, really cheap wine, uh, that stuff will give you a headache. It's, it's horrible stuff, but I don't believe generally in paying more than $20 for a bottle of wine. That probably tells you something about me, but generally, unless I'm you know, maybe celebrating something or something, uh, you know, in the end, I, I, I don't believe that these kind of things are going to make a big difference. That's what's really funny is I, I mentioned earlier the Watt Hi-Fi review of the ZX-1, and they suggested that there was a difference in sound between playing a, a FLAC audio file and a lossless WAV CD file, which to me is absurd. If you actually know how these things even work with digital ones and zeros and the encoding and the FLAC just gets transmuted into PCM, it shouldn't make any difference. So I find it it's really crazy when people talk about uh, these kind of things that, that have time and time again um, been proven not to actually make any difference. 
Um, so yeah, that's my take on speaker wire. Now that said, I used to be a salesperson at I used to be a salesperson at uh, an electronics retailer in Australia, and I never sold speaker wire. But there was one like there, except for this one time, this one gentleman came in and he was buying speakers and told me that he wanted to get a good speaker product and like just to get a good hi-fi setup and I was diplomatic as possible because he seemed like someone who who wanted to get something good uh, and I kind of told him look I don't really believe speaker wise make a huge amount of difference and a lot of people don't think that they make a huge amount of difference but if you're going to spend this much on your hi-fi setup maybe you want to be better safe than sorry and, and some people you know take that approach uh, and he did end up buying some monster cable from me, which I feel only a little bit guilty about. But, uh, you know, the approach there, like uh, some people have spent already a lot of money on their audio products and they figure maybe it makes a difference, maybe it doesn't, but for my peace of mind, maybe I'll get the expensive cable. And that kind of instinct I sort of understand. It's not something that I would do personally, but that's what some people do, I guess. Um, okay. Um, actually, I have no idea how long that this has been going on for because I did not look at the clock when this thing started. Um, and hilariously, this interface does not tell you how long these Hangouts actually go for. Um, I don't know when to actually wrap this up, but uh, let's give it... It's, it's 10 o'clock now in Australia, so I'll probably give it about 10 or 15 more minutes. Um, okay, so if you're just joining us, this is... Uh, my test of this Google Hangouts function just to see how this works uh, and I think it's worked pretty well so in the future I might be doing some little headphone reviews or or maybe some conversations or maybe, maybe like you know kind of uh, conversations with uh, people uh, who are in the community who might want to talk about some of their gear I think that could be something that would be enjoyable to watch um, and if you have any ideas if you've just watched this hang out and you have any ideas about what to do, uh, head over to the, uh, leave some comments or, or try the uh, question and answer thing or, or try this group chat thing which honestly I do not know if it works or not. It apparently has not worked at all. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'll just type some gibberish in that. It really has not apparently worked as far as I can tell. But maybe, it, uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, I will probably be using this kind of setting in the future if only to kind of force myself to Sorry, to make uh, you know make better videos, uh, make faster videos rather, where I don't do the same take over and over again. Now um, let's see. I'll show you something else. Let me just grab it. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I've got here the JVC, uh, I think it's the HAS500, let me just double check that, uh, JVC, HAS500, ah, so yes, it's the HAS500, uh, and this is a really cheap headphone from JVC, uh, let's see what the price is, on eBay you can get it for $32, US dollars. This thing is, I have to say, probably one of the best value cheap headphones that I've ever heard. It's, it's by no means a giant killer. I mean, it's quite muffled sounding. It's somewhat congested. But for like a $30 headphone, um, it is, I think, an excellent, uh, excellent little piece of hardware. Uh, the S500 has this really chunky, bassy sound, but it has some nice texture to the highs. Uh, the whole headphone actually you know, folds up in this crazy Byzantine way. So it actually folds up in the middle, which is insane. I've never seen any headphone do this, but it actually... Actually, I have seen some, but not at this price point anyway. It folds up here as well as along these joints. I don't know if it's durable. It's certainly not the, the nicest feeling headphone in the world. But, um, you anyway, know, it sounds surprisingly good for the price point. And uh, I would heartily recommend these over, say, the Skullcandy Navigators or the 
Logitech UE4000. Though the Logitech UE4000 is a better built headphone and you can get it for about 40 bucks now. So I suppose if you want something durable with detachable cables, the 4000 is a good idea. But I just like the fact that this folds up. I mean, that's always really a, a plus for me. Uh, and I like the fact that it's got a high quality cable for a headphone of this price point. Like the cable actually feels really nice and supple and the drivers are just nicely textured. So, you know, I think this is a really nice little option. And if you are after a cheap headphone, because a lot of people always ask me, why don't I look at products that are under $100? Everything I look at is too expensive. And honestly, I agree. Everything I look at is too expensive. I spent too much money on everything. Um, the S500 is this uh, kind of headphone that's well worth maybe a, a gift for someone else or a backup pair. The S500 is a really neat little headphone. Um, and well worth a look at. And it comes in a number of different colors. So this is the silver and black. There is a black and black color, which I think looks really cool. Um, well worth checking out. Uh, okay, so next question from uh, Wayudin. Can you tell me a little bit, bit about your work on Audio 360? Um, I actually haven't done that much stuff on Audio 360 yet. I haven't unfortunately had the time to do much writing for them. Now Audio 360 is a bit of a brainchild between um, my good friend Warren, uh, who is one of the editors at uh, Audio 360, and Michael Mercer, also a friend, and, and a bunch of other guys who got together and decided to make a kind of uh, another kind of headphone magazine and they've had some deep roots with the HeadFi community. Uh, Warren is a moderator over at HeadFi. Um, yeah, I haven't unfortunately had the chance to do much articles for Audio 360 yet. I'd like to be able to, but I'm still trying to uh, get through some stuff. I am planning to write a KEF, uh, uh, KEF M500 review for them after doing the video, and I still have the M500 because it is definitely a reference headphone in its class, um, so I'll be coming up to that. Uh, Audio 360 has a really interesting approach, I think, because they want to do all their reviews uh, as, as conversations between two people, which is really what you want from, from a headphone review publication. You want multiple opinions. I mean, I'm just one person. I've just got one set of ears. Everyone hears everything differently, and that's literally not only because people have different opinions, but literally people have different ear shapes. They have different uh, uh, sensitivities to different frequencies, so they're going to be, you know, multiple people are going to give you a completely different opinion on some headphones, so it's always good to get more opinions. Now, if you haven't heard of Audio 360, I'll just show you because I have the power to do that now. Um, let's see. So, audio360.org. It's this really cool review website. Um, don't tase me, bro. Hilarious. Um, actually, I'm not sure why that is the case. I don't. You know, I probably had to read the article. Uh, they look at some really nice stuff over at Audio 360 as well. Um, we have some really cool stuff. Now, uh, this is hilarious. Uh, Warren chose this picture for me. This is actually my Facebook profile picture. Uh, this is me wearing a Hello Kitty onesie at an anime convention. So you probably can't get more nerdy than that. But uh, um, as you can see, my picture is very different from all the other pictures here. I do actually have a pair of headphones on in this uh, picture. It is a pair of... Uh, TMA1 Studios, which I wear whenever I have to wear a headphone that you know looks kind of generic and cool. Um, it's not exactly cosplay that I, what I was doing, but it's just something fun. Uh, onesies. Uh, it seems like the economy is 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 turning into a at least around Australia. I mean around Sydney anyway. It seems like the whole economy is turning into a frozen yogurt slash onesie based economy. Uh, so. You know, I, I, I look forward to the future where everyone can wear a onesie on the street in peace. Um, onesies are very comfortable um, and very easy to wear. Okay. Oh, Cloaked Yoshi says, it's been going on for about an hour and ten minutes. That feels about right. Um, so in the future, if I was going to do this, I'd probably break it up into smaller segments. Um, just so, because at the end of this, I can actually save the Hangout and put it publicly so you so people can re-watch it. I don't know if I should do that for this, but I'll have a look at it, because this was just a test run. I'll have a look and see how it went, because apparently I can do a bit of editing and stuff like that. Um, 
but I will try to do a bit more signposting so that uh, I know actually where to put the edits in the future video. Um, but the rest of Colloquiosi's question is, are there any comparable options to the momentum with noise cancellation? And what's your opinion on that feature? Actually, I spoke about noise cancellation in the very beginning of this, uh, this hangout. Uh, noise cancellation, I think, is... Uh, there are some circumstances where noise cancellation is useful. So if you're on an airplane or something like that, uh, and there's some specific engine noise that you need to cut out, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of useful. Otherwise, noise cancellation is a, is a feature that you had to add extra batteries for, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And it's going to add an electronic harm to the noise. A lot of times, noise cancellation will change the sound signature of the headphone, and it's generally not a positive change. Uh, in the case of the Parrot Zik, which I tried, actually the noise cancellation was OK. It was, it was subtle. But it does change the, the sound generally. And I think it's, it's a little more hassle. You pay a lot more for noise cancelling headphones. I personally prefer, you know, if you get yourself something like the Sennheiser HD25 or the Sennheiser Amperia, or in ears like the SE215 or Edemotic earphones or anything with deep insertion, you can basically block out a lot of noise just pure with pure passive noise isolation. Um, and so generally, I always recommend uh, high passive noise isolation over noise cancellation. Uh, so if you want something that's comparable to the momentum, uh, but you want more noise isolation, go out. You can still find these. I mean. I can't get over this. I got my Sennheiser Amperia for $160, and you can still get them for about $160, $200 uh, on clearance. This is a discontinued headphone, but it is absolutely fantastic. And at the current clearance prices, it is an absolute steal. So uh, this is always, in every single one of my videos, ever since I got this headphone, I I've made recommendations on this because this is an amazing headphone. Um, maybe aggressive for some people, but this is fantastic. Uh, it's it's durable. It's got amazing noise isolation. Um, I think it looks pretty cool as well. Easy to drive. Works with a lot of players. Uh, it's got fairly tough clamping force, but you know it's not actually uncomfortable. I've noticed that if you wear it for a long time, it's not too super uncomfortable. Um, you know, it's an excellent headphone. Sennheiser really knows what they're doing. Um, so that's kind of my top recommendation for portable headphones. The KEF M500 is also a really good alternative to the Momentum. Um, but yeah, I don't actually have that many headphones with specific noise cancelling electronics that I've tried that I would specifically recommend. Uh, okay, so um, if you're just joining us, uh, I'm at the tail end. I'm going to probably wrap this up in about five minutes. Um, but I've just been trying out this Google Hangout thing, and uh, I'm hopefully going to start making uh, more kind of question and answer sessions or maybe some conversations with people in the community just to uh, test this out. I've actually really liked the way this uh, question and answer kind of dynamic has worked. I've actually been quite happy with that. The only thing I can say is that my voice is actually um, starting to go a little just because I've been talking for like an hour nonstop. Uh, so it would be nice in the future to do a conversation with someone so I can at least not talk for half the time. Uh, OK. Um, oh, this is a nice question to wrap up on. Uh, hey, Lachlan, what do you suggest for someone like myself? Uh, music fills my life. This is a uh, uh, the comment here. A commenter like, uh, what do you suggest for someone like myself that is starting out in doing reviews, unboxing on YouTube? I just love the way you review your headphones. Thank you. Thank you for the um, kind comments. Okay, so I started doing the headphone reviews. My first review was the Sennheiser Momentum, and it was a kind of thing where, uh, you know, I didn't really have any specific uh, tips for doing it. Um, all I know is that. Uh, YouTube is very much a, a conversation. Um, if you look at anyone who's ever been successful on YouTube, it's not only because they make good content. I mean, that's really part of it. But it's also because they've been able to engage with their viewers and 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 uh, you know have a good dialogue. And they're doing something that they enjoy. And I think it you know it's it's demonstrable. Uh, when they make the content that they enjoy it. So, you know, 
you can make a review video and in the end someone's going to look up in the store and they're going to maybe spend five minutes watching your video but if you can if you can get engagement with your fans um, and you can get engagement with your viewers they'll, they'll they'll you know it's like this question and answer um, session they'll give you an indication of where you need to go um, and in the end you really should uh, have a uh, you know engage with the community even if at first it turns out that uh, when you start out uh, that it doesn't look like uh, you know you're making any headway these things grow exponentially uh, I never would have imagined that I would have gone 5,000 subscribers today um, from the beginning um, the other thing is uh, pay attention to SEO search engine optimization make sure you tag all your videos you have accurate descriptions remember that YouTube YouTube's business model is to make good content available to the viewers because if they have good content people watch more videos if they watch more videos Google can serve more ads if Google can serve more ads they make more money everyone wins so it's in their interest to make sure that the content that they promote is high quality content and the only way that YouTube knows something is high quality is based on uh, engagement from the viewers so if you can get people you know and in the end you, you want you want people to do this anyway you want people to let you know to give you feedback but that YouTube's gonna look at things like how many people like a video how many people subscribe to your channel how many people comment on your video how long people watch your video for they'll look at all those metrics to work out what is the actual quality of this video and how should we rank this versus other videos so anything you can do to kind of look better in towards the algorithms kind of all-knowing uh, all-seeing eye and you know let the NSA know and whatever etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, anything you can do to increase your visibility will help you make better videos um, and and in the end the more viewers you have the more uh, kind of information that you'll get from them and in the end just always remember what have you got to lose like uh, I'm doing this random hangout thing uh, and I just decided to just throw this up here randomly just because uh, you know, I'm not going to work out how this thing works until I actually give it a go uh, and give it a try. So um, yeah, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll look up music fills my life. So I will look that up. Um, it's yeah, you're already in the fans of the show circle. So you know, I've got you there. I'll, I'll check out your uh, videos. Um, so thanks for the tip. Um, uh, Muhammad, who was the first person to comment, ask what are these headphones? These are the Sennheiser Amperias, let me just show you because it's just not clear um, from me just blabbing the name. Uh, Sennheiser Amperial. So this is, oh, sorry. Uh, let's actually get the official page here. So, ooh, oops. Oh, that didn't work. Sorry, I minimized the window and that terminates the uh, thing. Okay. So this is the Sennheiser Amperia. Uh, it's spelled A-M-P-E-R-I-O-R, just here. This is a discontinued headphone. Uh, the Amperia is a variant of the Sennheiser HD25, which I made a video review of. And the HD25 is a phenomenal design, 25-year-old headphone with an amazing uh, following behind it, very durable. And as an experiment, Sennheiser kind of made this uh, aluminium edition where they, they changed the ear cups to aluminium. They gave it a cable that's not like the two-meter steel cable on the Sennheiser HD25. It's, it's more suitable for consumer use. There's two versions of the cable with a... Uh, iPhone remote. I talk about this in my portable headphone review video, but um, you know it's it's easy to drive from an iPod, etc., etc. Now this headphone was a bit of a a no goer for Sennheiser in the market. They've discontinued this headphone, and I think it's because they could not clearly differentiate this headphone from the Sennheiser Momentum. Because you walk into a store and you look at the Amperia and you look at the Momentum, they're about the same price. You think. One is made out of lambskin leather and it looks really classy. The other thing kind of looks, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, in the end, it looks like a cheaper headphone, so maybe people went with the momentum and the Amperia was not very popular. But it has been discontinued and the clearance prices for this headphone, um, if we have a spot check over at uh, 
Amazon.com uh, Amperia. Yeah, two hundred dollars, one hundred and eighty dollars. These are this is a steal for a headphone of this quality. Oh my god, on um, the DT1350 for $147, that's actually a really good deal as well. These are all really good deals, so <laughs> uh, if you need to buy a pair of headphones, maybe look at these. Um, now, Sennheiser had just made a Sennheiser HD25 Aluminium Edition, so it's basically the Amperia, except with the HD25 drivers with 70 ohm uh, impedance and the 2 meter steel cable. And I haven't had a chance to listen to those. They should sound very similar to the Amperias, though not absolutely identical. Um, but this is an absolutely fantastic headphone. I cannot recommend this enough. So, yeah, again. Uh, anyway, okay, so um, if you just joined us, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to be wrapping this up right now. Uh, this was just a little test of the Google Hangouts feature, just seeing how this thing goes, and hopefully in the future I'm going to make some more videos where uh, I have some engagement with people in the questions and answers section. By the way, I keep gesturing to this side of the screen because this is where I see the question and answer questions in the iMac that I'm looking at. But obviously, you can't see what I'm seeing. There's a, there's a, there's a column of questions here that I'm looking at. I'd be interested to know what this thing actually looks like uh, when I'm watching, you know, when you're actually watching the video. Um, but yeah, in the future, I'd like to have conversations uh, with other people in the community and do that kind of thing. Just, just, just uh, have some interesting videos to make. Uh, okay, all right. A uh, really quick question from Kokoshi: Which do you find more comfy, Momentum or Amperia? I hope the next time you make a hangout, I can get notified. Uh, yes, I will surely make a. Just on that note, I will surely make a notification previously uh, in advance, like a day in advance. Next time I do a hangout. The only reason why I did not make a, uh, a notification earlier for this one is because I never use this, and I don't want like 200 people to come in and just watch me make an absolute fool of myself. So thankfully, only about 20 people have probably seen me um, do crazy things tonight. No, not really that crazy, I suppose, but you know. Um, so yeah, you're, you're kind of my uh, guinea pigs in this regard. So next time I do this, I will certainly put more of a notification up ahead and let you people know when that's going to be going up. Uh, will she find more comfy, Momentum or Amperia? I think the Momentum is more comfortable for sure because of the leather ear cups and because they're larger ear cups. Um, that said, the Amperia is actually surprisingly more comfortable. Like it's surprisingly comfortable for long-term use despite the high clamping force. So um, if Comfort is your main priority. I would definitely prefer the Momentum or the Kef M500, um, but the Amperia isn't absolutely terrible in terms of comfort. Uh, it's more than tolerable. I've worn it for several hours, uh, and I use it for kind of audio monitoring a lot of times. Anyway, okay, thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a good day or a good night uh, wherever you are watching. Thanks for hanging out with me in this Google Hangout thing. Uh, uh, and next time, if you're watching a Hangout and you are enjoying it, please uh, you know, share it with other people so other people can join it while the Hangout is happening in the, uh, as it goes on. Um, and also, if you don't know, you can talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Lachlan Likes a Thing. I do have a Facebook page, and that's where I kind of answer more questions, and it's a little easier than responding to YouTube comments. And I also have a Twitter account, which I don't quite use as much, but it's there, just in case you want to just send me a quick message. Uh, and that's at uh, my Twitter, sorry, my Twitter handle is at Lachlan Likes a Thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, uh, and have a good night.